and uh, I've done my bachelor's in physiotherapy from uh, Sancheti College, uh, Pune, and done my master's in physiotherapy from KM Hospital, Mumbai. So kind of seen the best of both the worlds in Maharashtra, Mumbai as well as Pune. Then I I have worked for a few years at Jaslok Hospital. And uh, I specialize in senior citizen rehabilitation. So I've been associated with various organizations that work for senior citizens. Uh, so what I believe in is that healing is something that we can do also through various natural means. Now, of course, some cases require medication, surgeries, but not all. So whenever we can heal our body through natural ways, through diet and exercise, then that's the best way to go ahead with. So I'm also a very avid animal uh, lover and a uh, uh, reader. So I'm sure a lot of you must be having similar uh, interests. Uh, so starting with uh, today's topic, the topic is immunity in seniors. So currently due to the coronavirus pandemic, immunity is always has been in the news since more than a year. So we'll be discussing through a physiotherapist's point of view, what all can you do to improve your immunity and how do you know whether your immunity is poor or good? So I'll be starting with the PPT. Is the name visible? Oh, yes. Is my screen visible? Okay. So immunity in seniors. Now, uh, I'm sure most of you must have Googled this word, uh, this sentence uh, in the past one year, which is how to increase your immunity. So any of you have Googled this, this particular term, just raise your hands, no need to speak. So I'll be able to know if any of you have Googled. So this is in fact the second most common uh, discussion or uh, uh, the term that has been Googled uh, in the past one year, because everybody wants to know how to improve their immunity. So why improving your immunity is important? What is such a big hoax about it? So um, like there are bacterial infections and there are viral infections. So treating a bacterial infection is uh, somewhat a little simpler because first thing, bacteria can be killed through an antibiotic. So antibiotics are very effective on bacteria. Then uh, bacteria don't mutate that often. So that is another good thing. But when it comes to virus, which is uh, which the coronavirus is also a virus. So first thing that what the virus does is, is it connects to your body. So it kind of gets into your cells and adopts its RNA and DNA. So it binds with the RNA and DNA. So your body does not understand what is our own cell and what is an enemy cell. So your body doesn't know what to target easily. Then antibiotics don't work on uh, viruses. Then the antiviral medications that we have so far are not so effective. So considering all these factors, we know that viruses are difficult to treat. And of course, viruses mutate very quickly. So once your body starts uh, fighting a virus, understands the pattern of the virus, develops antibodies, till then you have a mutant of the same virus. So the body has to start all over again. So that's why it's a little difficult process to treat a viral infection. So the only solution, the only way we can protect ourselves is our innate ability our innate immunity that if we build stronger, we will be able to fight the virus and best case scenario, never contract the virus. So how many of you think you have good immunity? Just a show of hands. How many of you think you have good immunity? Show of hands. How many of you think you have good immunity? No, very few people. Okay, there are a few who think. How many of you think you have bad immunity, not good immunity? Those who think they're not sure, don't raise your hands. But those who think they have poor immunity. Okay, so mostly people are in the in the category that they're not sure. And some of you think they have good immunity. Okay. So now coming to uh, what parameters decide whether you have good immunity or bad immunity. So what helps you understand how your immunity is, good or bad? So mostly I'll answer on behalf of all of you, those who raise hands and those who are confused. For them also, the common thing that we know is that we don't catch infections very easily. We don't have common uh, issues like common cold, runny nose, sore throat, fever, cough, cold. All these issues don't affect us so easily. So that's how we know we have good immunity. Right. But are there any other parameters? Like, Is that the only decisive factor that you have good immunity? 
now a lot of us who have not contracted coronavirus are somewhat a little sure that okay we must be having good immunity so we didn't contract it with the grace of god but then what other parameters are involved this is a very general classification ki infection nahi hua khasi sardi zyada nahi hota hai aur hota hai to theek ho jata hai so that is good immunity but then there are some uh, some parameters some factors that are involved in deciding so that is called your immunity score card so now i'll be presenting something to you which is like a score card it helps you calculate how good your immunity is so this score card has eight parameters so i would like you all if you all have a pen nearby uh, or so pen or paper then just mark on it how much uh, you are scoring or otherwise you can just remember in your head so first parameter daily bowel movement so does your bowel clear daily on a, a normal basis like early morning you go once or maybe once a day or twice a day does your bowel movement is clear or you actually struggle with your bowel movements are you constipated or if you go and clear your bowel still you don't get the satisfaction that the bowel is clear so if your bowel movements are clear they are every day normal and regular then give yourself a score of 1 and if you think they are not so good give yourself 0 and if you think they are somewhere in the middle kabhi acha kabhi nahi so give yourself 0.5 okay so if if any of you have any doubts during this explanation you can ask me immediately then no access weight is the second uh, no access weight is the second uh, parameter so uh, are you obese have you recently gained weight or you've always been on the higher side of the weighing scale so if your weight has been higher always or you recently gained a lot of weight that shows that your immunity is susceptible to going down so that's why if your weight is normal in the normal range approximately then give yourself a score of 1 add a score of 1 to the previous score and if not then give yourself 0 then we go to the third point clear skin now i'm sure a lot of you will agree with me especially women that clear skin has always been a problem so do you have clear skin or not is also a sign of uh, how good your immunity is why do i say so why why is there a connection between skin and immunity because what we eat how our bowels function everything shows on the skin so what is inside is what shows on the outside so that's why if you have clear skin that means your immunity is actually good because your body is functioning well from the internal uh, point of view so that means even your immunity uh, parameters are stable so give yourself one in case of clear skin zero in case of poor skin or 0.5 if you think okay kaam chal jata hai one and two breakouts here and there is okay then absence of laziness so how does your daily routine go are you too lazy throughout the day do you feel tired do you feel lack of motivation to do things in in the whole uh, uh, chores of your day so how does your day go if you are completely energetic always ready for a new challenge always ready to go here and there and active that means you give yourself a score of 1 and if you think you're too tired or lazy or don't feel like working then you give yourself 0 then strong sense of hunger uh aap sabko pata hoga jab hum bimar hote hain hame bhook nahi lagti hai when we have fever when we suffer from some illness hunger is the first thing that goes we have no appetite so uh, not having hunger is a sign of ill health so if you have a strong sense of hunger during noon noon time you feel like bhook lagi hai acche se kuch khate hai so that is a good sign of immunity especially today since it's raining heavily so aaj kis kis ko chai ke sath tale hue pakode khane ki hunger lagi hai so all of you have good immunity just an example so give yourself one for good sense of sense of hunger give yourself zero for poor sense of hunger then deep sleep 7 to 8 hours sleep good sleep you wake up fresh in the morning that shows you have good immunity and if your sleep is very much disturbed that's a, a yellow card because your immunity is getting affected because of it then no pain in the body an occasional pain here and there because of some issue is okay once in a while but regular pain in the body means all your body is focusing and diverting the resources to is treating the pain so your body is not diverting the resources to your immune system hence any infection will catch you also easily so that's why this pain and immunity is related so i'm sure all of these factors at least some of these factors must be new for you because we've never thought of immunity being connected to sleep or pain or hunger or skin 
but it is very important that these there is a connection and once we understand the connection we can work on the connection and improve it of course then the last one is positive thoughts so uh, no matter how uh, how other factors you're taking care of but throughout the day if you're not positive if your attitude towards life is not positive that also shows that your immunity is going to go down what you think you become mind over matter always so that's why positive thoughts is important so uh, analyze yourself right now do you think your day goes in positivity or positive you always have a positive outlook towards life or you have feelings of resentment anger guilt or other kinds of negative feelings that are building up inside so that tells you that uh, if positive thoughts you had then give yourself a score of 1 and if not give yourself a score of 0 so now we come to the scorecard calculation these are easy parameters right not very difficult so uh, can any of you unmute yourself and tell me who scored 8 out of 8 anybody who scored 8 out of 8 No one. Hello, yeah. I got seven and a half. Only that wow. clear skin, that clear skin. You know, there are okay. little brown patches here and there. So I gave myself half. Okay. Okay. Wow. Lovely. Seven and a half is also very good. Some brown patches. Anybody else? Yeah, seven. Seven. I have seven. I, I got, got seven. Seven. About that skin, you just explain why it comes brown, brown. Yeah. Please explain us. Oh, that's a good. Ah, yes, ma'am. We'll take it in the end. We'll take the yeah, skin. Yeah, there are some brown patches on the skin. So that's right. the only good thing. Six and a half. So that's why you gave yourself point. Six and a half is also good. Good. I have got two. Yeah, Anybody else? I got seven. Yeah. Seven. Eight, wow. Eight. Nine. Eight. Eight. Who is the one with eight? Shama. I, I Shama. Want good Very nice. Eight. Lovely. Eight is a wonderful score. even i don't have eight i would give myself eight do i work out every day i try my best to keep myself fit but i give myself 7.5 so eight is a wonderful 7.5 so an eight wow okay so anybody around 6 7 8 is a good score according to me if you are uh, around yes raghu sir want to ask something i want to ask something you have to unmute yeah what about getting yes, taking short naps you know what about Say half an hour or fifteen minutes at any part of the day, maybe in mid morning, afternoon. I'm very getting a good night's sleep. Taking short naps is completely normal. In fact, it's a good sign of good health. So, uh, daytime usually after you've had lunch, a little lethargy, a little feeling of or a desire to take a small nap of twenty to twenty-five to thirty minutes, not more than that. Never doze off more than thirty minutes. Then it turns into A lethargic body. If you take a nap of fifteen to twenty minutes, that turns yourself into a more uh, invigorated, energetic body. So you're more freshened up once you wake up from that fifteen twenty minutes nap. Yes. So that's okay. A good nap in the afternoon is okay. Yeah, Completely it's like healthy. more than about twenty twenty five minutes, and it's very refreshing yes. after that. I feel very refreshed. Yes. So that that's good. You can continue with your nap. That's absolutely healthy. Good. How we can have a better positive thoughts because that is the main problem. Having a positive <laughs> thoughts and good. what we should be doing to overcome that problem. That's a very good question, sir. In fact, I'm going to address that that issue uh, before ending. So the last part is going to address that. So we'll come to that. Now I'll resume the PPT. So wonderful! I'm really happy to see that all of you had very good score. and no surprise because i've seen the activities that you all have been doing every day so i was expecting a good score from you all so in fact i even attended the morning riddle uh, uh, riddle uh, event that happened and i was myself surprised to see that you all were really quick with the riddles so wonderful wonderful so now let's come to an action plan to strengthen immunity so so far we saw what all things cause a problem with immunity now we come to how to fight Uh, or fight the viruses fight the bacteria and strengthen your immunity so immunity boosters there are a few very common things i'm sure you must have heard about all this you must be hearing about it every day but it's very important to reiterate the right things at the right time so that it stays with you and you follow it in the right way so healthy diet no brainer everybody knows the diet has to be healthy but 
there are some very small nuances that we need to understand so we take that ahead then sunlight and fresh air every day make sure every morning uh, around 6 uh, around 7 7:30 in the morning or around 8 o'clock is also okay before 9 just go and stand in the sun uh, for a few minutes 15 20 minutes and uh, take some fresh air and do your pranayam or breathing there then good sleep like we discussed emotional well, well being like raghu sir just asked that how to take care of that positivity and positive thoughts so that we'll discuss further first thing uh, what are the qualities of an ideal food very simple points let's just brush it through satvik food whole some food satvik food means something that has good energy to it good positivity to it any meal which is uh, fresh lively taken directly from nature are packaged packaged foods like the packaged biscuits the packaged things that we get are not satvik because they are dead food they have been processed so much that they have died in the industry itself and what we are eating is actually a dead body so satvik foods are always wholesome plant based and fresh foods uh, then seasonal always uh, opt for seasonal foods i'm sure everybody must be knowing this that uh, jab tak summer tha mangoes were in watermelons were in ab summer chale ja rahi hai so now eating mangoes watermelons after the summer has gone is not seasonal then local anything that is produced in 100 km of your area is local so us sitting in mumbai and eating kashmiri seb is not a very good idea so once in a while taste ke liye humne kha liya that's okay but every day we order those exotic seeds from here and those exotic things from here and there is not a very good idea then fresh try to eat the meal which has been prepared within 3 hours of cooking and try to uh, eat it as a, a warm instead of cold then taste it. it has to have good taste otherwise you'll never feel good about your food so all these are simple five qualities of ideal food then few simple principles um, always eat plant based water rich foods if you put uh, if you put a packet of biscuit in the mixer grinder what will it turn into powder if you put a watermelon uh, pieces into the mixer grinder what will it turn into juicy water rich food so water rich foods are very important avoid non vegetarian food because it's difficult for the body to digest avoid overeating eat mindfully what we do a lot of times is we are not mindful we are just looking here and there tv either other and eating so avoid that then never criticize your food see abhi barish ka time hai so everybody wants to eat those tala hua bhajiya but we are getting the craving to eat it we want to eat it and we we'll even ask our uh, uh, our female friends in the house or you, you know we might go and just cook it But but the problem is that we'll be criticizing the food. कि अरे ते oily खा रहे हैं, oily खा रहे हैं, oily खा रहा है, oily खा. So don't criticize your food. If you think you should not be eating it, don't eat it. But if you think once in a while a little binge is okay, which is okay once in a while. Then if you're eating it, then don't criticize your food and eat it. Then eat it with keeping in mind that you have to eat it in moderation. So oily is not bad if if eaten in moderation. So don't overdo it. But never criticize your food. Then using rock salt. Say na na. Avoid the regular salt. Switch to rock salt. Very good advice for uh, all of you who are hypertensive and even otherwise also switching to rock salt is a better alternative. Then eat less grain, more vegetables. So the ratio has to be grain thirty percent, vegetables seventy percent. That should be the ratio. Then avoid mixing multiple grains. Then do not combine fruits and cooked food in the same time. Eat fruit separately and eat the cooked food separately at different meal times. Then don't drink while you are eating because it reduces the digestive fire. Then, like I already said, avoid the dead food. Uh, want uh, include the living food in your diet. Then prohibited after sunset. Very important. These four things are because they cause. cold nature in your body they they increase the uh, increase um, uh, cold nature of your body like bananas radish curd cucumber so sardi khasi badhata hai so avoid these after sunset then nitrate rich food now these nitrate rich foods are very much in the new now because spinach radish beetroot carrot are few examples and what they do is they increase the nitric oxide content in your body and that helps to boost your lung health helps to boost your oxygenation improves your hemoglobin but again a disclaimer that don't overdo these so uh, if you're not having them in your diet add them to your diet in a moderate amount if you're having them less increase the quantity a little but don't start overdoing them but they are very effective if taken in the right way in the right quantity especially for your lung health then digestive fire so uh, once we wake up in the morning the sun has come up so our digestive fire increases with the uh, heat of the sun so around 12 noon when the sun is at peak our digestive fire is at peak 
and once the sun sets it's uh, the digestive fire is also dampened so try and eat between that interval so that's why 12 noon sun at peak or digestive fire at peak eat like a king then around sunset eat like a beggar then physical exercise now we come to the main cream of the uh, of the uh, webinar so let me give you an example first uh, imagine you've gone to the most exotic five star uh, restaurant in mumbai imagine your favorite restaurant and imagine that you've ordered the best most expensive most popular dish on their menu and the uh, dish is being made by the best chef of their hotel so the uh, chef makes it in the perfect way the technique is perfect the spices are perfect cooked to the right amount cooked in the right way the vegetables are all amazing and everything is just perfect about the dish except except there is no salt in the dish okay there is no salt in the dish but rest all is up to mark so now tell me how many of you think that the dish will be still tasty any yeses any noes will it be tasty it will be a bland uh, taste yes so it won't bland. be tasty because the salt is missing so it will be bland and you won't like the taste so much because it's bland of course no salt at all so that salt is as important to the to the dish as exercise is important to our health so physical fitness or daily exercise is the salt of your life without it no matter how everything else is perfect there still be a missing factor there still be a missing uh, edge to the whole dish of your life so that's why exercise very important and i'm sure all of you are anyways doing it since i've been noticing your routines since a few days and i am definitely impressed so that's a good routine that you all are following uh, let's just work towards refining it a little more through my help so uh, now this is just a fun activity i was inspired by the riddle thing early in the morning so please tell me what do you see on this a rabbit a rabbit Rabbit. Okay. Anything else? Rabbit. See a bird. One the side is a rabbit, rabbit, and the other side is a. The other side bird. is a face, so it is like a uh, rabbit. Yes. Eagle, eagle. Not eagle. I see both the rabbit and the duck. Yeah. Yes. Correct. There is a rabbit and there is a duck. So some of you saw the rabbit first. Some of you saw the duck first, and it took a little time to readjust your perception to view the other one. so that's how things are in life we can take things as a perception so corona virus for example a lot of us have thought that uh, you know such a thing has come over us and there is no hope and some of us have taken inspiration out of it and moved on with something positive so just a perspective difference and a lot of uh, things change in life so here comes the end of the ppt but we have a very fun interesting exercise session to go let's just quickly revise in a few short words what all we learned So I'll just go through the PPT in a short uh, manner. So we learned about the difference between bacteria, virus, and why immunity is very important, especially in the case of a virus. Then parameters that help us decide whether immunity is good or bad. You have calculated your scorecard where you decided which score you have depending on these eight parameters. Then action plan has a healthy diet. Exercise we discussed these two things so far: satvik, seasonal, local, fresh, and tasty. then eat plant based uh, avoid non veg avoid overeating never criticize your food switch to rock salt increase the content of vegetables and water rich foods in your diet avoid fruits and cooked food at the same time so few things in brief avoid uh, packaged foods then do not consume radish curd banana cucumber after sunset and increase the content of spinach radish beetroot carrot throughout the day then digestive fire eat like a king in the uh, in the noon and eat like a beggar at night then the salt of our life physical exercise and here we come to an end so i'll turn off the ppt now i have a question yeah yes ma'am uh, one of the points was do not mix multiple grains in the same dish yes If I make a porridge of lapsi, uh, millet, and quinoa seeds, what about that? It's mixing grains. 
Yes. So, ma'am, uh, what happens is when you mix a lot of grains together, no, they're difficult for your body to digest because they are anyway grains are a little heavier for the body to digest as compared to vegetables. So, when you mix them together, they are difficult for your body to digest. So, those people who have bloating issues, issues with digestive uh, uh, problems, then for them, mixing grains is not a good idea. Even Overall, mixing grains is not a good idea. If you are having chapati, have chapati, whole wheat chapati. If you are having ragi the next day, have ragi on the second meal. But mixing multigrain atta is actually uh, having a multigrain atta, mixing few few or many grains together is actually not a good idea. The body gets confused because there are different enzymes secreted for digestion of different types of grains. So some part will stay uh, undigested if you have those mixed grains. So that's why that point is important. Uh, so you can I avoid. Didn't it, I didn't get it completely. So what you say is not to mix grains. It's better to make yes. it one grain. Yes, correct. You got it right. So Madam, which is hello. Which is good? Beet or jawari? Skin patches, brown patches on the skin. How it comes? Some people get it. <laughs> Brown, brown. Uh, now, can, can we do one thing? Let's just take a quick exercise session and we'll get back to the questions because then we'll miss the exercise session. So I'll surely get back to every question. Let's just first take the exercise session. Okay, so uh, let's start with a simple thymus activation. Now, what is thymus? Thymus is a gland which is like uh, the defense ministry of the country. So it's the defense ministry of your body. So it's a gland which is situated here. Here means the sternum. So this is the sternum bone. These are your collar bones. And this is the sternum, the middle portion. So here beneath or underneath the sternum is your thymus gland. So what the thymus gland does is it provides all the soldiers to fight an infection. So here are your T cells, B cells, all are produced here. So there is a way to activate the gland. And how to do it is a simple technique. First, what you do is take your tips and kind of gently tap on your thymus gland. So it's a gentle tap. Yes. So I understood where we are tapping. In the center under this heart bone. Now who shouldn't be doing it? Let me say it first. Anybody who has had a heart surgery, an open heart surgery with a suture here. In the recent six months, please avoid doing it. Though this is gentle tapping, still avoid doing it if you have had it in the recent six months. So gentle light tapping, no thumping, just gentle light tapping. Yes. Correct. Now, next, this was finger tapping. Now, next, we move to fist tapping. So, make a fist and gentle knock knock. So, it's like you're knocking on a door, but a very delicate door. So, it's not hitting yourself. It's a knock knock under the sternum. So, in this area, in the center area. Simple knock 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 knock. Yes. Yeah. So when can you do it and how long you should do it? You can do it early morning or you can do it in the daytime. Avoid doing it while you're about to go to sleep because it activates your body. So you want to uh, relax your body and at the same time activate your body will be contradictory. So hence do it early in the morning or in the daytime. How long to do it? One to two minutes is enough once or twice a day. That's all. So you can do this or you can do the gentle taps or you can do both. This is a simple way to activate your thymus. Though you don't feel a change or a big thing that happened, but it's always a gentle activation. That's all the body needs. This is a very good way to boost your immunity through thymus activation. Now, next is uh, we'll see, a, uh, see two, three simple acupressure points to boost your immunity. So, keep your hand like this. And this is your web space. This is your first web space between your thumb and your index finger. So, here what you do is gently press here. And slowly increase the pressure. So here you can go a little hard on yourself. You can do it this way. With your thumb on one side. And your index finger of the other hand on the other side. And or you can do it this way. With a grip like this. So you're using your this portion. And your uh, thumb. So this way. You can press this way. Or you can press it this way. Where are you pressing? Between your thumb and your index finger. So this is another immunity point. How long you're supposed to do it? One to two minutes. So like Trisha ma'am was explaining earlier that because you have a pain in that area does not mean that there's a problem with that area or that particular organ. You can, uh, you can ignore that pain and go ahead unless the pain is severe, which it shouldn't be. 
depressing and activating your immune system to work better then the next point is on the elbow so what you do is you trace on the outer side of your elbow and here comes a bony point so this is one bony point we are not there and we are here on the bony point on the side of your arm bone and then what you do is trace and press so this is so you just short of the bony point here is my bony point and i'm just little ahead of the bony point how do you press in circular directions if you're not able to locate it exactly you can just do a little pressure in that area what this does is activate that point which stimulates your immunity so these are few options i'm giving you you can do any of them it's not necessary you do all of them so this is another point then another point is again here so this is your collarbone like we saw the thymus which was here on the sternum now we go a little on the depression of your collarbone and then press here in circular motion yes like this you can do it with your thumbs also if you're comfortable that way this is your collarbone and you're just under your collarbone here and you're pressing it yes so this is another point that activates your thymus gland thymus gland like i said produces the soldiers it's like the military training academy uh, of your body so here are all your soldiers being trained so activating or stimulating them is always a good idea and there's a lot of research that supports this that it does bring a positive change to your immunity so next we move to two three simple exercises uh, that i'll show you i'm sure you you all are already doing a lot of exercises but let's just do a few simple ones with me too so sit comfortably keep your phone ahead so that i can see you and you can see me now first thing we start with diaphragmatic breathing exercise so one hand on the upper chest one hand on the lower chest just above your abdomen and now you breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth breathe in through your nose breathe out through your mouth how do you breathe out like a pout imagine you are blowing a birthday candle take a deep breath very good pushpa ma'am very good anna ma'am shreen ma'am all doing great keep going no holding your breath just breathe in 